The Late Night Legends podcast is meant for an adult audience only. It may contain sexually oriented content. Content may not be suitable for sensitive listeners. Please be aware of your surroundings. Listener discretion is advised. Legends, where we're going to talk about Cars 2 this evening. <laughs> <laughs> we put on Cars 2 this afternoon. Sure oh. did. Oh. Sure did. I hope you're kidding, James. Because I was tired of watching Cars 1. No, because I was tired of watching Cars 1. Oh, wow. <laughs> he, just goes, car- he points to the screen. TV? Cars? 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 So, as I was saying... Welcome to Late Night Legends. I'm one of your hosts, Joan. We have Jesse, Frank, Kay, and James tonight. Charlie is off. And let's, I mean, we're going to get into some fun stories. I was going to say, last week we did a murder mystery. This week we're going to do a mystery that is a murder. So we're (laughs) switching it up a little bit. It's Um, only kind of a mystery. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not helping me sell it. No, I think people are gonna like this one because it's it's a wild story. Uh huh. Speaking of wild stories, next week I will be covering the Von Meter of Iowa's uh, creature, so that will be fun. And then the week after that, someone is doing something, and I'm proud hey. of them. It's gonna be Frank. Frank's gonna do something. Clowns. Something so cool that he's going to tell me about right now. What are it's we doing? It's clowns. It's clowns. It's clowns. It's, it's clowns. It's clowns guys. Jesse's going to take the night off. Uh, it's okay that Jesse <laughs> takes the night off. Uh, a few years back, uh, to preface it, a few years back, there was a, a trend where people were dressing up as clowns and scaring other people, uh, like innocent people. But then that trend went out of control, and some clowns were actually up to no good doing malicious things like breaking into people's houses, trying to hurt people. And so it turned into this big, huge, scary debacle that lasted over a period of time. So, uh, if you want, if that if that piques your interest and you want to hear more about it, tune in to that show in, in two weeks. Some time. would argue, mostly people who work and or live with children, that scaring children on purpose is very malicious and rude. Oh, that's true. I mean, there was I there was, was some clowns. Uh, I think it's Con hilarious, craze, and it was not fun. <laughs> There were some clowns that would, yeah. you know, walk, like, recognize that there's a house, like, with a camera, like, CCTV ring doorbell, and go up, not ring, not knock, but just stand on the porch and do scary shit. You know, like, one of them, like, tore apart a pumpkin, and uh, we'll get to it. Tune in. Yeah. Tune in. And, uh, yeah. Listen. 
Okay. Children also fucking can scare you. This is this James. Is, yeah, I'm sorry. Children are terrifying. Sorry. Children are terrifying. Wait. This is this is a TMI story, real quick, real quick. I <laughs> came home pretty late the other night, wanted to hop in the shower, and the shower is running late, get hot. I'm already fully un- undressed at this point, just brushing my teeth before bed, and all of a sudden I just hear daddy and my daughter is standing right next to me i don't know when she showed up but i literally toothbrush naked cut, like grab myself like ah. and then like because i got scared she started crying but, like what am i supposed to do oh so i like God. woke up woke Wait. up my wife to like take her back to bed so she jump scared you okay because you were like children are scary me. but i wasn't i didn't know it was gonna be a jump scare there is a no, whole it was... subreddit about like creepy things kids say. Oh <laughs> god, it's terrifying. And, like some of them make sense and some of them are so out there and Justin and I have joked about that like you like if a kid says something like that, you just put them outside and you're like, We'll try again. This is fine. We don't need this <laughs> anymore. <laughs> oh yeah. The first time if anyone here becomes a parent, the first time your child wakes you up in the middle of the night standing right in front of your face, <laughs> they're done. It's done out the window. You just throw you them put the child out, out the, the window? window. Yes. Yes, out the window. I, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I yeah. freaked my mm-hmm. mom out a little bit when I was three because we went to Disneyland and she was pretty sure she was pregnant. And she's like, I'm going to take a test when we get home. And I like got out of my stroller and turned around and I started punching it. And she's like, Kimberly, what are you doing? And I stood up and I just look at her deadpan and I go, I'm punching my little brother. And I have a little brother. My mom was pregnant. <laughs> and I was punching him. Mm. Yeah, he was practicing. <laughs> look at James writing that down for later. <laughs> Note it. Noted. Noted. Does so did anybody, anybody see Northern any... Lights this weekend? Well, no. I tried. Oh, I, didn't see I them. missed them. We I'll did. Steve mm. thought I was nuts. <gasps> it was I so live funny. Right next to downtown, so I have too much city pollution to have seen it. There are people in actual mm-hmm, Chicago mm-hmm. that could see it, though. Well, I'm like really, really, like really close to downtown, which is like we see the own. We I see the lights from the actual city reflecting off of mm-hmm. the sky. Like that's how bright. Yeah, it is. I think. So I think. I um, uh, it's best like with your. It was best with our phones, because you could oh. kind of see it with the naked eye, but when you used your phone to like take pictures of it, then it was like whoa. It was mm-hmm. really really cool. Okay, that's beautiful. You they sent us a picture in the chat. Of oh wow! But like she was I'll saying, s- you really r- couldn't really see it with the naked eye, but as soon as you opened up your phone. Mm-hmm. It was gorgeous. Ooh. That's yeah, cool. It kind of looks like James and I combined right now. Ooh. Right. It, it, even mm. we're on theme. That's yes. what we did. Back on top. We're cosplaying Northern Lights. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have any personal news? I said, I'm sorry, Justin, get fucked. And then I said, Rock and Snail. <laughs> he deserves it. <laughs> oh. no, Justin's a sweetheart. Justin's a sweetheart. Oh, I, I will never. He is a sweetheart. I will never say anything bad about Justin. He's he's such a sweet guy. Wow. Joe's like, no, you, you can kid- trash him. No, he's a great guy. He just has too many straight men in love with him and defending his honor all the time. I'm not in love. He needs to court me a little bit more before I fall in love with him. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. He will not court you, you, and then you'll want him He's playing hard to get. It's really upsetting. You can't can't steal Frank from me. Justin can't steal Frank from me. Here's the thing. Justin plays hard to get. I play hard to want. (laughs) Oh, Oh, no. Oh, we were just at your wedding. What the hell is happening? Kim is sitting right over there. This is not a therapy session. Kim Kim is sitting right over there laughing. (laughs) (laughs) Can you guys see her in the reflection? Can you see her? No. 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 (laughs) She actually, you probably could. I'll have to to enhance it in post. Ew, but okay. (laughs) Oh. Oh my god. Harrison, this is Harrison. a little chaotic. <laughs> I just got sorry. Chaos. Sorry, James. Sorry. A, that's all right. That's before all right. we get started, well, our get last into... announcement. Yeah. Hold on. Last announcement I want to do before we get started is I want Jesse to tell us about this awesome guest that we're gonna have on. That oh, we've right. already oh. that we've booked. 
<laughs> we were going to announce it last week, but we thought it would get, it would be best if you were to tell us about your guest. Okay. Um, well, on June 10th, uh, we're going to have uh, Larry Eisler. He, um, I met him in February. I did an expo for him and his fiance in Wisconsin, but he actually has a show called Expedition Entity on Paraflix. Um, he had that for a while. I don't know if he's doing it anymore, but he won like uh, an award for it. Um, but he's been in school for like film and making commercials and movies and stuff. So he's going to be doing a bunch of projects this summer, I think with Chris Fleming and um, possibly a few other people. So on the 10th, he's going to come talk about that as well as we're both going to be at an expo on June 8th in Countryside, Illinois. And then uh, I believe also in August, on August 3rd, um, we're going to be in Wisconsin. So that's how I met him, awesome. but he's, he's, he's really cool. <laughs> Can't wait to have Larry on. Also, uh, in the off chance that uh, Mike Ricksecker is listening, or if we can get Charlie to cut this in in, in post uh, after the fact and make a little TikTok, I would love to hear... I've heard some things about the harp being responsible for generating the Aurora Borealis, oh, yeah. as it has mm -hmm. been proven to do. He's our harp expert that we had talked to. Uh, so, if you're but listening, you guys get to talk to Mike Ricksucker? What? Oh we had God. him on as a guest. Oh yeah, he's I the nicest guy. That. He got engaged like that night. The next the day. Next, next day. day oh we had him God. on as a guest. Next day. <laughs> next day popped the question, and uh, he was such a cool guy. Man does not age. No, he does I think not he's age. actually a time traveler. Um, but no, he, I, he was. we talked to him about harp for a moment, so he knows about the harp, and while this Aurora stuff was going on, I was reading that there's actually like a lot of sun flares and solar mm -hmm. activity going on right now, and he's our harp guy. I When we had him on, I was so excited because not many people know about the harp and the implications regarding conspiracy that might be involved with it. They mm -hmm. have released statements that they were able to uh, make a man-made Aurora Borealis. So that's why mm -hmm. people are saying that it's visible in places that it shouldn't because there may be harp involvement. So I want to talk to him about it. So Charlie, yeah. do your thing or I can do my thing and, and we'll, I want to hear a comment and then Mr. Mike, if you want to be on our show again, that would be really great. Just let him know. Let him know. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> okay, James. James, take a okay. second. All right. Now I know this is not our normal thing, but this story is just really crazy. It's a very crazy story. Uh, all right, so we're going to set the scene a little bit. It is 1929, and it is post-World War I, pre-World War II, and there's a guy in Berlin named uh, Frederick Ritter. He is a doctor, and he is obsessed with Nietzsche. Obsessed with him. So what does he do? He and one of his patients get together. These folks are both married. They decide they're going to get together, and what they're going to do is they're just going to go off to the Galapagos Islands. They're going to find just a random-ass island, and they're going to just live naked all the time <laughs> on an island. Because that's what you do. Now, fun fact, his teeth was rotting out of his head, so he made a metal set of teeth. He also took out all of her teeth. Her name is Dora. So we've got Frederick and Dora. Uh, Dora then also has multiple sclerosis. And as her doctor, Frederick basically is like, you just don't want to cure yourself enough. you got to work on that. You're going to beat it by just wanting it more. So let's go to an island where we can be naked and you can beat your MS naked on an island with one set of teeth between the two of us. Okay. And then she so, the setting man. the scene a little bit. <laughs> so, we're s setting the scene a little bit. So, all right, let's see here. Pull up my notes, pull up my notes. So, I have, like, a, a direct quote from, from Friedrich here, which says, My decision to go into solitude was not a rash inspiration. For 20 years, the idea had been maturing in my mind, but I had early perceived that one must learn to wait, even though patience, as Nietzsche says, is the most difficult of virtues. Now, at the age of 43, my time had come, and I did not hesitate to take the bold step which I had long foreseen as an inevitable one for me. Every human life follows natural laws in its development, and if I am to make my unnatural decision to forsake society seem natural to others, as it, as it unquestionably was to me, I shall have to sketch a few facts of my childhood and youth which will be enough to explain me as the homo solitaris, 
One does not have to be a psychoanalyst to read between the lines of my brief history and see why I am why I am I. So this dude is going through something. He's working through something, and everyone's kind of working through something. Yeah, sounds like a joy at parties. Yeah, mm, he's an asshole. Let's just preface this <laughs> that he's an asshole. I'm all right. Good. So him and Dora. Oh, go for it. Go for it, Frank. I was Let's say, hear it. I'm also sometimes an asshole, and I also uh, identify as a homo solitarist as well. <laughs> All right, there you go. So, uh, Friedrich and Dora take the, the trip down to the Galapagos, and they uh, find this island called Floriana, and they decide this is it. They're going to set up shop. And the news goes crazy. Because it's like, all right, two people trying to like homestead it on the Galapagos, and they got like a whole lot of press. So they're living there for about do, 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 how many years were they there? Uh, why don't I have that in my notes? Anyway, they're there for around like a year or two before another guy by the name of Heinz Whitmer decides that he's going to convince his wife that, hey, these folks here have a bright idea. They're on to something. Let us also go to Floriana. Even though you have a small child and you're pregnant, no. let's go and go to Floriana as well. And they just show up there. And Friedrich and... Do- I'm so oh, sorry. sorry. That's my dryer. <laughs> <laughs> my dryer's playing a tooth. It's no, sorry, that's guys. mine. <laughs> That's Wait, good. your dryer is singing too? Hold on. Wait, did yours just go out too? My dry I, I know my dryer is drying and it's like ten feet away that way. <laughs> no, mine just went off. Wow. What are the odds? All right. Let me I'm so <laughs> take sorry. A picture, take a picture of my dryer. <laughs> Mine's like right through that door too. What? Is your dryer the kind that sings a song that you think is going to end like three times and it does not? It just keeps going? Is I'm it like, one of those? Why is this necessary? Sorry, James. Anyways, I'm James, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you just bought a dryer and they wrote in the review, like, it does play a nice song at the end. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Oh, Bye, James. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, did James did James rage quit? <laughs> so insulted. Oh, oh, sorry. Internet. Listen, here's okay. what happened. Kay's dryer became sentient and then totally kicked James' internet connection from across the country. Is what yeah, I'm streaming this from my phone right now, everybody. I like I'm using Woo. my phone as a hotspot. Woo! Ooh, okay. What a so we're going to do this. All right. Let's so see. Friedrich and Dora mm-hmm. get their nice little little homestead cottage going. Margaret and Heinz, the Whitmers, with their little son, Harry, show up and they're like, hey, we want to live here, too. I think we're all going to be best friends. And Friedrich's like, fuck off. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and he and literally Friedrich like they're like do you know any great spots that like we could like hole up on like where's the best place and Friedrich takes them like hey I got this perfect place for you guys like don't you worry this is gonna be great oh your wife's pregnant you expect me to deliver this baby cool great I'm gonna take you two hours hike away from me into a cave oh my gosh so he takes his family and puts them into a cave. And they, they're just like, cool, this is fine. This is great. So while, like, Heinz and Margaret are, like, building their own little, like, cottage off to the side here, two hours away, Friedrich and Dora are all just hanging out. Now, the thing is, is, like, Dora's not doing so hot here. Because she's got MS. <laughs> they only have one set of teeth. They're not doing great. And basically, he spends his days berating her. Telling her that the reason she's sick is because she doesn't want to get better enough, that she's the re- like, that it's mind over matter, and that, like, she's a fucking worthless piece of shit, basically. So that's wow. what she's dealing with all day. That sounds so Meanwhile, lovely. Love that. It's so lovely, right? Okay, so these are the it. vibes on the island. We've got two separate, like, 
camps going on here. The okay. miserable camp. The family that's just trying to get by. Okay. And they're basically surviving by the fact that they're a novelty. And that passers-by, like, ships will come by. And they'll come out and greet them. And they'll bring them, oh. like, supplies and stuff like that. So, like, they're subsiding on the island to some extent. But really, they are, like, beholden to all of these people who are just, like, passing through. Quick question. Why is this a 1950s yeah. sitcom? <laughs> it gets so much worse and so much more beds on because point. They can't, they can't film together. Do they have separate beds in this? <laughs> oh, wait. Just you wait, Joan. I'm, I'm so Joni, excited. just you wait. So, all right. Things are, Joni. things are Things are going okay, though. Everyone's got their own little niche. Everyone's doing all right. No one's, like, everyone's got their easy piece there. They're trying to figure it out. The baby is born. The baby is healthy. Everyone's happy. Great. Then arrives the Baroness. <laughs> the Baroness and her two male lovers. Ooh. O is right. All right. So the Baroness is a Austrian woman named Eloise Werbon de Wagner Boscat. Wow. I absolutely nice. butchered that probably. And <laughs> she called herself the Baroness. Was she an actual Baroness? Fuck no. No, she wasn't. <laughs> absolutely not. But she shows up with her two German lovers and a manservant <laughs> to the island and is like, we're going to build a hotel. This how is what we're doing tonight. How insulting is it that you have two male lovers and the third guy comes in, you're like, hmm, servant for you. This is like reality <laughs> TV before reality TV. This was like, oh, what is absolutely. that island with the reality? Gilligan's TV? Island? Oh, yeah, Gilligan. Island. Fantasy Island. There's a lot of islands. It's like Fantasy <laughs> Island, Love Island, Gilligan's <laughs> Island, Naked and Afraid, all in, all in one. Yeah, it's basically... <laughs> There is a bit of Naked and Afraid meets Gilligan's Island vibes here. Oh my god, I totally forgot they're all naked. Yeah, they're, they're all, all naked. Well, that's no. what he oh just, That's just... what Frederick wanted. He wanted everybody to be naked to cure the they MS. Have, to be they clear. Have no teeth, to be... And they're all naked. If she was naked and she wanted it enough, the MS would go away. That's the prognosis. To be clear, just, just Friedrich and Dora are naked. <laughs> that doesn't make it better. The Whitmers are clothed, but actually, I will say this: the Baroness is also pretty naked. The Baroness and her lovers are naked. Yeah, so here's yeah, the just thing, though: this <laughs> just makes it more convenient. So, I mean, they're pretty sure that basically, when it comes to the Baroness, is like everybody was doing everybody in that little corner. So they showed up and they decided to create this little area, and they called it the Hotel Paradiso. And it was going to be they were going to build a grand hotel. On the island. And of course, that's not what this island is about. This island is about, like, getting away from society, living in a shack, being naked, not, like, luxury hotel. And at the same time, she's generating, the Baroness is generating all this publicity. Well, now, like, you know, we had the, like, the folks who were living there already. Now, all of a sudden, there's this, like, sexy new, like, girl on the island who's, like, trying to get people to come to her hotel. So what do they end up happening? What happens is, like, a film crew shows up, and they film, like, a short movie, like, black and white, starring her on the island, where she's, like, a naked pirate queen, and, like, she, like, captures the men and all of that. Eventually, though... HR, I'm yeah, not sure go for if it. this is appropriate, what kind of video they're filming... Um, I'm not their <laughs> HR, unfortunately. <laughs> I would have had a lot of other comments before we got to this video. I really enjoyed this little quote from a, a travel website that talks about it. They say that she was an attractive woman and greeted passing ships, ships wearing a skimpy outfit complete with a whip and a pistol. <laughs> That's Actually, how I like to greet ships too, though. Listen. I I might want to be friends with her. Hi. <laughs> she, I, listen, I think we all would be friends with her. We would be. All right. <laughs> so, let me see. The names of the 
two men. Well, the three men. I have too many tabs open. No, there's three. Oh my double. god. Compi- there was there's three. three. There's two. There's always three. There's two, and then there's it's Frederick, the boyfriends. Right? No, no, it's the boyfriends, and then there's the manservant. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so we have the man and just. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have too many notes here. It's okay. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the Baroness's rivals, the Mark from Stories. Da, 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 da. People all think the Baroness was, like, super pretty. Um, all right. Basically, one of the folks uh, within her little camp, known as Lorenz, kind of fell out of favor. And he basically started to just, like, hang around, like, Frederick and Dora and, like, would go over to, like, Margaret and Hans, uh, Heinz, and they would, like, she would, like, take him in for a while. And all he would do is, like, complain about the other guys. So, all of a sudden, one day, this is around five years after Friedrich and Dora have been living there, and uh, a number of years after the uh, the Whitmers showed up. On March 27th, 1934, Margaret wrote in her diary that the Baroness had told her that some millionaire friends were taking her and Philipson, who was the other of the boyfriends. So there was the two boyfriends, Lorenz and uh, Philipson. All of a sudden, the Baroness is saying that, like, her and Philipson are going to go with some millionaire friends on a yacht, and they're going to go off to Tahiti. And I'm getting really, like, you know, uh, Alexis from Schitt's Creek vibes here. Like, she's just going to go to Tahiti real quick. Like, no big deal. She's going to be back. Problem is, the Baroness and Philipson are never seen again. No! Oh, it's spicy! (laughs) That day, uh, so, uh, it says Dora heard a gunshot and a woman screaming. <laughs> so, we've got a bit of a locked room, locked island mystery here. Fine. We got the Whitmers, we got Friedrich and Dora, we got Lorenz. We got five people, and no one to this day knows what happened to the Baroness and Philipson. We have a gunshot, we have a scream, and we have a mysterious boat to Tahiti that no one actually saw. Oh, so there's there, a number of. Go there for were it. no bodies found. No bodies ever found. Nothing. And so, Dora is the, the only one who knew the Baroness was going to Tahiti. Margaret. Margaret wrote Margaret. in her diary that she was told that the Baroness was going to Tahiti with some friends. Okay. Dora heard the gunshot. Now, they're two hours worth of travel apart. Lorenz had been coming around the Whitmers a lot lately. Everybody hated the Baroness. No one wanted this hotel. So basically, everyone on this island had every reason to want the Baroness gone. And <laughs> since the little thruple was no longer thruppling, who had the most motive? The, so the, the prevailing theory is that Lorenz Hines dispatched of everybody and that they all collectively agreed... To never speak of what happened. <laughs> so to this day, we still do not know what happened to the Baroness or Philipson. Slowly, uh, Friedrich passes away. Uh, and the Whitmers stay for a while, but ultimately they move off the island but stay in the area. And Dora also eventually leaves and passes away on her own. But the Whitmer family still has descendants who live in the Galapagos to this day. And they uh, took 
Margaret's Diary, Dora's Diary, and there's actually an incredible documentary called The Galapagos Affair, Satan Comes to Eden, that recounts the whole thing, and they get a bunch of really awesome people to be the voiceover for all of them. So we've got, like, Kate Blanchett's in here. What? We got... Yeah. Kate Blanchett is Dora. Diane Landreal. Kruger is Margaret. Uh, Josh Radner shows up at some point for all of you How I Met Your Mother fans. He's just there. He's just there. <laughs> uh, but eventually, yeah, they all kind of, like leave the island slowly it all sort of just kind of falls apart after this murder but for the rest of their lives not a single person has ever said what has like what may have actually happened what do you think happened? uh oh i'm 99 percent sure that ha uh, heinz and lorenz you know <laughs> killed them 100 percent, they were murdered uh but a couple of uh a couple of deaths that happened afterwards so lorenz died shortly after as well uh this is where this is also gets crazy so he tried to get back to germany real quick and hired a norwegian fisherman named newgrid to take him to a nearby island where he could catch a ferry to the mainland both of them disappeared and their mummified bodies were discovered months later on another <laughs> island. So basically, he murders them. He's like, I need to get the fuck out of here. Gets on a boat. That boat then crashes on another island, and they die there. Wow. So, and then a few months after that, uh, Dr. Ritter, Friedrich, or good pal Friedrich, uh, dies of food poisoning. <laughs> Got ate some bad chicken. He ate some bad purpose. chicken. Mm. Sounds like well, 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 there is a long-standing rumor oh. that Dora poisoned him. Oh, <laughs> that she had had enough <laughs> and wanted to get the fuck off that island, <laughs> so she killed him. I mean, That's if awesome. she would have wanted to get over the food poisoning enough, he could have he done did, it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, exactly. Like, yeah, he could have just willed it. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah. like, I didn't see anything. <laughs> I was trying I to anything. find it. I vaguely remember she wrote something incredible in her diary about his death. And I can't find the. Uh, what, was it Uzi? The... <laughs> no, it was Diary's about like, like fucking oops. No, it was something so like like salty and sassy. Where she, like she wrote something like you know I wish I could have watched him die a thousand times. Like oh so God. like so much glee in his death. Like oh I need God. to find the fucking quote. Go because off. it is like, it's, yeah, it it is go off queen. It is like yeah. you, she writes whatever I can't remember what it is, and it's dry. I was spent all day trying to find this stupid quote, but like, who she like, oh, it was amazing. You can read her oh, diary. You can buy it. It exists. Um, let's see what other wrap up here. So in general, so. Uh, so then Dora left Germany and wrote a book afterwards. Um, the Whitmers stayed on the island. Margaret only died in 2000. She lived pretty long. Wow. Um, and it says here that the mystery of the Galapagos affair has never been solved. Margaret Whitmer died in 2000. She stuck to her story about the boat for T Tahiti her whole life, although she loved dropping hints that she knew more than she was letting on. <laughs> yeah, she did. Dora claimed that she and Dr. Ritter were certain that Lorenz had murdered Philipson and the Baroness and that the Whitmers helped him cover it up. So no one knows how Newgrid and Lorenz ended up on that island, which was far away from the destination, and that's going to also remain a mystery. So I know that that was a quick one. That was, oh, sorry, another fun fact. 
Uh, Friedrich was also a vegetarian. And yet he died by eating poisoned chicken. Uh -huh. That's... Hold on, that math, that's a little sketchy, James. That math's not mathin'. That was it math's beyond not chicken? Mathin'. Was it was it was it the impossible chicken? <laughs> I I think what I love most about this is like you have these two women writing these accounts of what happened, and they're just daily diaries. And if you read between the lines, you get this like much bigger picture of like what's going on. Like Margaret's like, in her diary, Dear diary, the Baroness is off to Tahiti with a millionaire on a yacht. And then Dora's over here being like, I heard a gunshot. <laughs> and some <Hair> screams. <laughs> and you're like, hey, be cool. Be <laughs> exactly. Cool. Also, Dear diary, know. Friedrich ate some bad chicken. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. In the case of Lorenz, did he go from yeah. like... Did he go from a a, a, a lover to a unicorn <laughs> in any other relationship? I, no, he went from a lover. He was, I think, I think, yes, he was probably the unicorn in this situation. Got it. However, he went from, like, lover to unicorn to, like, we don't want to hang out with you anymore. Mm, they, so, like, they started start. making... So the thing, too, if I'm remembering correctly, is that, like, they were also trying to, like, build the hotel, and it ended up just being, like, the Baroness and Phillips and, like, making Lorenz do all of the manual labor. So what, what does Lorenz. unicorn mean? Oh, uh, when you're in a couple, Jones. and you're looking for a third, uh, for... Fun times that adults have and together. Generally, adults. generally, this has to be a, a a mostly a heterosexual couple. Yes, is important to the dynamic here. Yes, a unicorn is a single person who is willing to join you for some fun times. James, but, you want to add? <laughs> yes, add in that that unicorn is down for whatever with either person. Yes. Is the, yes. like, specifics. Yes. So it's not just like, oh, we're here, we're gonna be on the one. It's like, everybody is <laughs> getting on with everybody. Hey, you need something tonight? Oh, okay. Oh, what about you? Do you, you want something tomorrow? <laughs> uh, I just want to put that, uh... For some reason, Frank jumped the gun on writing in the chat and said, yep. to Air Diary, today I found out I'm a unicorn. And now he's trying to retract that. Yep. And I don't think you can. First off, I don't you're think not, you can take that single. back. <laughs> I don't think you have to necessarily be single. You just have to be a solo Thanks, person. James. Thank you, James. Okay. Thank you. What do you mean, thank you? You could be a unicorn, James Frank. I think we've all learned something new about Frank today. <laughs> Did your fiance or did your not fiance? Did your wife learn this did too? Did your you? wife know? <laughs> <laughs> Kim sitting actually, there. Kim no, sitting there, story, just like holding her knitting. True story. <laughs> hey, true story. Uh, when we were at the hotel before the wedding, uh, my bestie Ryan was explaining to me, "You put some fucking pineapple on your door, and that indicates that you're a unicorn or some shit." Yeah. Like that. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that no, no, it's your swinger. Yeah, swingers yeah. are different. You're swingers. Oh, swingers he, are very he, different. He bought like a air freshener from the gas station. And he was joking around with it. I'm like, okay, okay, Ryan. I don't know how true that is about the upside down pineapple. It is 1,000 oh, percent true. It's it's true. It's okay. very true. How do you <laughs> know? We had some Kim neighbors. Like, yes. <laughs> we had some neighbors. <laughs> like we have a, we joking not jokingly we like the house that we bought there is oh, like pineapples man. often represent welcome. That's why you see them on some like mm -hmm. old hotels. Uh, but, but that's, that's also why the, why the swingers. Yeah, the upside down ones are for the swingers. What's what, what's this? One of these, but dead. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's from the dumbest movie ever. I'm so sorry that I just quoted that. Anyway, uh, but we have a like a pineapple on the sign for our new house that like was just there, and <laughs> Justin's like, "Do you think people will think we're swingers?" Just and leave it up there. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah, probably. It's fine because there's a there's a joke within our friend group that a different group of our friends are swingers. Um, and it would make sense that they would think that we swing with them. We don't. Mm. It's not a good joke, but <laughs> we don't. Well, just leave your keys in the bowl. That's all I'm saying. 
that's like a whole thing. It's like keys in the bowl. You pick keys out. Why do you, why do you guys know so much about this kind of stuff? I know. I'm why like, what the you? hell? Why don't? Yeah, I just yeah, I live in the world, Frank. Learn, learn orange, me, Frank. You gotta, you gotta, you. Gotta, I engage in the culture, like. Frank, you gotta have, teach. Have you ever what? seen The Grinch? Yeah, like the Grinch who stole Christmas Grinch. Yeah, the Jim Carrey version. Yeah, there's they got a whole yeah. thing there's with There's a party keys. at the beginning with that in it. They put the they keys. Put yeah, keys. with the keys in the bowl. What? In the bowl. And Wait, then the baby arrives that hold night. Hold on. Isn't the Grinch a family movie, though? Yes. Wasn't Rocco's Modern a Life a Grinch? children's show? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Don't there's feel alone, Frank. In... I have no idea what they're talking about either. There's a line <laughs> in the Grinch that goes, "Am I okay? Am I okay? The sun is out and the powder is bitchin'." Like, that is a line from that movie. <laughs> so, so like oh, yes. for for Frank and Jesse, there's a bowl, and when you get there, you put all your keys in it, and at the end of the night, the husband or the wife picks the key out. And the wife goes with whoever the key belongs to. Keys are. Yeah. But that, it's in the beginning of The Grinch, and people figured it out a couple years ago, and we're going crazy about it. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. is, like, my parents hey. knew the reference, and they just told me, they're like, oh, they do that so no one drives home. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what yeah. I would think. In Whoville, where everyone's house is right there on the circle. <laughs> yeah, Why yeah. Why do you all... No one drives home. I didn't see no cars. I didn't see no cars in Whoville. You know what? Yeah. Safe. Practice safe drinking and driving. And you don't Mm -hmm. drink and drive. I think it's actually Mm -hmm. in an Mm -hmm. episode of that 70s show also. Like I faintly remember that 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 Rhett and Kitty get to a party and they're like, put your keys in the bowl. And Rhett's like, we've got to go. And Kitty's like, they're being so responsible that nobody's driving home drunk. And he's like, no, we need to go home now. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Oh Jesus! I would like yep. to clarify um, for Frank because he's giving us looks. I don't think any of us have been to a swingers party. We just know what they are. Yeah, me neither. We're just in <laughs> form. Oh, <right. laughs> okay, wait. How old is everybody? Because I feel like me and Frank are the same age, and we're like, "What are y'all talking about?" <laughs> like, are we the old ones? <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't have any idea about any of these guys. This is like, now you're saying this it is... like, you, like you're writing in a diary and you're a woman who <laughs> might have murdered a man. <laughs> I know nothing. Bitch, I might be. Uh, no, I'm 37. <laughs> bitch, I might... <laughs> Remember when people yep. used to say, bitch, I might be? <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I might be. <laughs> bitch, I might. Oh, I wanna, I'm going to okay, drop so... some photos in the Discord. Um, nice. Because is it a baroness, my best actually... friend, who accidentally got Here, murdered? Hold on. It's okay. Well, I'm James just going to, like, that. quickly... Hold on. Jesse, uh, Boom. you got Kay, who's... Uh, Kay is 17 years old, James is 21, <laughs> and Joan is 18. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We're Gen Z. Yeah. Just to give you guys some oh. images, this is the baroness over oh. here. <laughs> I'm glad that guy's uh, wearing his pixelated. This is. I don't want to see it. This right? is. Well, he's wearing a. He's wearing a, like a tart loin cloth. Loin cloth. That's Philipson. Oh, okay. Um. Wait. So these are real pictures. Folks are. These are real pictures. These are them. Oh. Um. Yep. Here you go. There's the Baroness as the pirate queen. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. There she is. Yeah. Another weird chapter in life of the Queen of the Galapagos. Don't you it's like it was like this really crazy like like I, I just like if you can find the documentary it used to be on Netflix but they've since pulled it off it is called the Galapagos affair the devil uh comes to Eden and it is just like it is a wild story uh and then I also we can probably drop in can I find do we have the I'm going to dig for it. You can actually find the silent film that uh, the Baroness filmed called The Empress of Floriana. Man, she's got so many nicknames. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, like, you got to have a stage name. You got to change it up. Yeah. 
I'm sad that she's like she was murdered. I like I I don't know. I've mixed emotions. I am sad that she's murdered, but I think it's really chill that like everyone's like and nothing happened. She was and uh, just e. mm. Have you ever heard you know there's community. another and shot in daylight um, did. So there's another famous murder. Um, I'm trying to remember what the documentary is called. Okay, so his name was Ken McElroy, this guy. He was, like, the most hated man in this place called Skidmore, Missouri. And everyone hated him. Literally the entire town hated him. You know this, Joan, don't you? He wow. was shot. I love in this broad, story. In broad daylight. In front of... Like, the whole town. The whole town. Not just, like, a couple of people. Like, we're talking, like, the cops were there, the mayor was there, the <laughs> whole town was there. And he was shot, and nobody saw nothing. The whole town went... There was multiple <laughs> gunshots in his vehicle, and anytime someone asked, like, I... I don't recall. I, I don't, just, think I don't know. Like, I don't think I saw anything. Right? <laughs> no, no, this is this is even. It's literally just imagine an entire town just going. Hmm? I don't know. Seems seems suspicious, uh, but get stitches. Talkers get walkers. It's an entire town, entire town decided that they did not see anything. <laughs> Which, like, how big of an asshole do you have to be for, like, I imagine there was a priest there. That the priest was just like, well. Priest was like, I was looking at Jesus that day. Could God, not see. God <laughs> took him when he wanted to take him. You know? Yeah, it says, while sitting in this truck, McElroy was shot at several times, but hit only twice. All in all, there were 46 potential witnesses including wow. including his like like his wife was there and his wife was like <laughs> i don't know oh my god uh oh, yeah man. including trina who was in the truck with her husband when shot nobody called for an ambulance and only trina claimed to identify a gunman every other witness was either unable to name an assailant or claimed not to have seen who fired the shots and the da was just like well we don't know and it's a like Missouri-based Steve journalist Steve Boher described the attitude of some towns townspeople as well. He needed killing. Wow. <laughs> By the way, as a as a podcast, we do not promote violence. Uh, murder is Boo. not funny. Boo. But Disagree. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> Joan is obligated to say that because she's HR, but I respectfully disagree. No. Here you go. <laughs> don't. Here's the thing. Don't be the kind of person that an entire town will look away from should you get murdered. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's There's that. Yeah. Also, that is like, sorry. That's the, that's the, that's the bar. Also, maybe don't, um, don't criticize your partner who has a debilitating disease, a degenerative disease, and tell them to will it. Tell them that they just don't To will it better. Well, I have one more quick... Uh, wild murder story where no one is actually mad at the murderer that they also turned into a very funny movie called Bernie starring Jack Black if you have not watched this movie it's incredible it's 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 a mixed thing so you get real interviews from people and then you have Jack Black portraying the guy so he is I believe he was like the funeral home director and he was yeah he's a mortician and he's this like flamboyantly gay guy who strikes up a friendship with like an old rich biddy who everybody hates she's like the meanest lady and he's like oh no she's not so bad she's not so bad and like all of a sudden he starts dressing a little nicer all of that but he is beloved by everyone in the town too everyone thinks that he is just the nicest guy and everyone hates this old wealthy widow suddenly old wealthy widow is found dead 
and the main suspect is her bestie, Bernie. The It is the only case in the United States where uh, the trial was moved out of the county, like they moved the trial, because they were afraid that the defendant was too well-liked to get a guilty verdict. Wow. 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 Interesting. They were like, we all love him, we hated her, he's not going to get a fair trial here, we're going to let him off. Like, literally the whole town was just like, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> you know what? We've been there. It's, we've all thought it. We've been there. Yeah, it's like we, the, I, exactly. It's the, like, but watch, but watching the documentary is, and it's. I feel terrible because like no one should speak that. Like no one should speak ill of the dead if like that person is not like an, a literal monster. There are plenty of people who I'm like, I'm gonna dance on their grave when they die. I have a whole list of people that like I will make the trip to their grave. It's like that. Dave Chappelle meme where he's like, but, I don't think he did it. But you know what? Even if he did do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> but like, they're sitting there and you hear these people just talking about what a horrible person this woman was. And how everyone hated her. And how everyone loved him, and they were just like, "Listen, if he did it, he had a good reason." That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but I'm will... fairly certain that he murdered her and covered up her death for an extended period of time. Like she was out visiting family elsewhere. She was in Tahiti. <laughs> she was with in Tahiti baroness. with the Baroness. <laughs> All right. I know this wasn't a spooky one today, guys, but this, I hope, was a fun one. It was very fun. I had a blast. It's, it's still technically a mystery. Who could know who did yeah, that? Yeah, who? Who could have? Who could no it one... be now? I can't. Margaret, I dear know. diary. <laughs> nothing of importance happened today. LOL. <laughs> don't test the ink on this and don't see that I wrote it two months after the happening. The ink is mixed with blood. <laughs> but exactly. also, like, is it one of those things where they're like, nothing happened here, read my accounts that I've kept. Yeah, it's... Look at my detailed notes on the day. You see, like, an entire page has been torn out. <laughs> oh, I spilled some ink on it. It's all right. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Oh, I appreciate the fact, though, that, like... I, I love the fact that up until her death, even Margaret's like, I don't know anything. <laughs> Big ol' wink. Don't ask. I'm just a saucy... Don't, 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 tell, don't make me say. Don't ask. I'm just a saucy old lady. What do I know? <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> anyway, yep. that's the Galapagos affair. <laughs> Anybody want to do final thoughts? Uh, I can do final. I can start it off. Uh, my final thought is um, m men and, and boyfriends and husbands and partners that are of the male, not male, let's say m m masculine identity, like identity. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Stop being such dicks and making us move to island so you can look at us being naked and forcing us to have babies uh, with I will not care. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse your proposition that. um this kind of choose like this tells me why we choose the bear cuz uh, this all started with some man being like I want to be alone and naked with my girlfriend man and uh ladies don't do it just don't do it don't can, do it. You can you can be the Baroness, but like in a, in a positive way. Hashtag be the Baroness. Hashtag, but like alive. No, be the sea the queen is kind of sucked. The, the pirate queen. She like sucked, but like if you really think about it, it was a little revolutionary. Like if you really really think yes. about it, she like came and she's like, hey, first off, here are my lovers. They're lovers. Mm -hmm. Let's not really. They are turn lovers. The um. I'm going to bring civilization to you women because clearly you were all brought in here against your will in some way. You don't realize it. And that's okay. Actually, hilariously, <laughs> Margaret loved it. 
she had a blast. She actually well, really she got enjoyed a male living lover there. Out of it, so yeah. <laughs> no, she didn't. The Margaret did was... that. <laughs> Who the bar- Margaret was not Stuppen Lorenz. Oh. You think <laughs> Margaret was Stuppen Lorenz? Stupin. I don't know. I think they all were. They're all giggity. They're naked. You have no teeth. What else do you do? Oh my god. No, no, to be clear, the only people who were naked were Frederick and Dora. Stippin' or schleppin'. <laughs> Everyone, no one else was naked. Then again, no, no, the Baroness and her men folk were naked as well. But That's for very different of the reasons. <laughs> for, this, is, this is the longest oh final god. thought Joan has ever for had. Very different, <laughs> for very different reasons, they were naked, though. One was like Nietzsche naked, the other was sex. No. It was all about, Friedrich was all about Nietzsche. If Nietzsche wanted you to be naked, you were naked. Baroness was all about pleasure. <laughs> oh god, not my job. The Baroness <laughs> is just for... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm broken, so Joe. What's going on? I'm, bro- I'm broken. Anyone else have a thought? <laughs> Jesse, do you got a final thought? I think you're the most serious right now. Uh, my final thought is do not be that much of an asshole that a whole town will be okay with you being murdered. <laughs> this is a fine mm-hmm. final thought. Okay, what do you got? Mm-hmm. Um, in the community that I live in, we have a Facebook group for all of the homeowners, and there's mm-hmm. one person in particular, very f- fine lady, that Ooh. everybody cannot stand because she will call the HOA on you if you just want to like play a little music in your backyard while you're watering your garden Mm -hmm. absolutely not she will scream at you Mm -hmm. over the fences this lady has a reputation and I think she she needs to take a trip to Tahiti she does Um, Mm -hmm. and she would post all these complaints stupid complaints in a Facebook group and people are like get out of here and then one time she posted because the HOA came after her and nobody liked it. And she's like, this is so unfair. I can't believe somebody called on me and blah, blah, blah. And then nobody liked it. Nobody commented. And then finally a guy commented on it and he's like, listen, I understand, but you're not going to get any sympathy because you know everybody in the neighborhood hates you, right? <laughs> Can we get screens of this? I don't. I want to join this group, but I'm not a homeowner in that community. She uh, she deleted the post quite quickly ah. for that. Mm. Coward. I love like the next door app and our Facebook group drama. I love it so much. It's not very. It's not very cash money, Kay. Just saying that. It's not very cash money of her. James. <laughs> James. You gotta. You gotta final Ooh, thought for okay. us tonight. Final. Final thoughts. Just because Frederick Nietzsche says something doesn't mean you gotta do it <laughs> that's it that's it that's it that's all i got hey Ooh. i think it's a good a final thought as any so i'll take us the rest of the way unless anybody has anything else anybody okay so uh with that said what a fun episode i really had a lot of fun i like this i feel like it's it's the perfect sort of you know, like when you're enjoying a nice dinner and you have like that perfect drink to compliment it. It's like this episode is that perfect drink. But uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, thank Frank, you so much. Friends. I appreciate that. I am a nice, sure. tall, dark drink, aren't I? Hell yeah, you are. <laughs> I wish you'd put a pineapple on your door if you get what I'm saying. Oh my God. Next week, we're going to talk about the bat of <laughs> Van Meter. Uh, Monday after that, Memorial Day, we're all taking the night off to watch fireworks and uh piss off the HOA by grilling in our backyard with music oh, that yeah. next week which is uh, May 27th and then uh, on the 3rd we're talking about some clowns and Jesse won't be there but I'm going to SMS her or MMS her some pictures of clowns regardless so uh, oh we'll see y'all Woo. then I'm just kidding Jesse uh, love you guys <laughs> thanks for tuning in we'll see y'all next time take care of yourselves bye bye, bye. 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 solid bye. solid bye